Hi everyone, my name is Michael McLean and I'm the creator of the Michael McLean Talks YouTube channel. Before I go on, please remember to like, share, subscribe and comment on all of the content on this channel. Thanks. Keith Staten, thank you so much for coming on. You are um, you are, are still a member of a legendary group in Gospel Music Commissioned. And you're also a very successful solo artist. Three of your albums have reached, have either charted the gospel billboard charts or the Christian billboard charts. And just thank you so much for taking the time out just to be interviewed by me today. Hey, thank you, man. I, I'm just really pleased and honored that you would uh, have me on the show and just really highlight what I'm doing. And I appreciate you, man. I, I, I hear that you're a, a great platform to be on. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, sir. The, <laughs> the the first question I'd like to ask you is, please tell us about your experiences growing up and particularly how you developed your passion for music and how Commission was formed. Okay. Well, uh, I, I grew up in Detroit. I was born in Detroit, Michigan mm -hmm. uh, to uh, Bishop Gaston. Well, he wasn't Bishop when I was birthed, but... <laughs> Uh, all pretty much my whole life, he's a pastor, but Bishop Gaston Staten, singer, and Laverne Staten, uh, both of them uh, have gone on to be with the Lord now. Um, but I grew up with a pretty large family. I grew up with uh, nine brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. uh, six is six uh, boys, four girl family, and um, you know we we grew up like you know church culture, man. We were in church all the time. Uh, which I love. I mean, we, our church, at first, my dad was pastor of a, uh, assistant pastor of a very large church in Detroit called Clinton Street, Greater Bethlehem Temple. Then when I was uh, uh, 11 years old, my dad started pastoring in Detroit. And um, man, it was just a great time, great culture, young people, man, a lot of young people loving God and being accountable to each other. You know, it's kind of different now, you know, people kind of go to church on Sunday. You don't even know them, basically, you know, it, <laughs> you know, it, the, the, the old day of us being around the church and eating together and all of that is kind of not so much. But, man, I grew up in a time where we loved being in church, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday Bible class, Tuesday choir practice, Monday youth, you know. So anyway, we had a great time uh, doing that. I won't spend a whole lot of time there. I could I could definitely go there because I'm, I'm excited about um, my upbringing and and I would say with my family man all of my brothers and sisters serve the Lord love God so our parents did a great job man not just telling us and taking us to church but showing us God in the home you know just really showing us God it really made us made it easy I won't say easy but it made it a lot better to serve God and to uh, uh, live a life for the Lord because they were great examples but uh, i think this would be a great segue uh so being in church of course singing man I, I grew up music i mean i started singing when i was man very young eight seven eight years old you know just singing with the family and uh, i remember at a very young age my brother ron who really i credit him for so much in my music because he kind of pushed me and i remember uh uh, us doing a talent show there in the house and uh my uh it was a few of us but anyway i won the talent show singing i can see clearly now uh the rain is gone i can see all the popsicles in my way <laughs> instead of obstacles <laughs> i said i can see all the popsicles in my way but anyway that got me started man singing then that went on to uh, at 12, singing with the choir in my dad's church. And uh, then doing my first solo. I'm sorry, phone. Okay. Sp sorry, my phone started ringing. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that uh, I, I did my first solo at 12. And my, again, my brother Ron, he was instrumental in pushing me, you know, it was one of them deals where it was like a youth convention for the state. So it was people coming from 
everywhere, man. It was it was a packed out place, over a thousand people. <laughs> and I had never sang in front of, well, you know, I had sang in elementary. My first was really in elementary. I sang in the Christmas play. And again, Ron, because Ron sang at school and uh, my teacher said, can you sing? You know, so I ended up singing pretty much in elementary and uh, uh, people really recognized and knowing me for singing as a young guy there. So that was my first experience, but actually singing in church the first time at 12 it was at this conference, at this convention, youth convention, state convention. And my brother just said, hey, I'm gonna put your name in, man. I said, yeah, let's do it. You know, I just remember the night before, man, all night, just like, what am I doing? What am I about to get into? You know, <laughs> so that day I sang um, and it was different because I didn't know any better. I. I sang a song that was more of a kind of a contemporary slash gospel-y uh, traditional. I don't know. It was, I came to Jesus and I'm so glad. And just so happened, well, it was God that a, a, a guy by the name of Billy Brown, which is a really known keyboard player in the city years later, but he was able to play it. And I sang and the people were like, it was one of those moments where they were like, you know, we just thought that little boy, you know, could run around the church and cause trouble. He's up here singing and, and glorifying God. It was amazing. And that just kind of let me know that, um, you know, I could really do it. I could sing people like it uh, other than just my family and my church, you know, because the church has started calling me from all around the country, wanting me to come, you know, within our organization, wanted me to come sing you know, as a young kid. And so we did a lot of singing at our church and Carl Reed of commission also was a member of my dad's church. His dad was a deacon in the church. Yeah. And uh, Carl and I started singing together at, at church and we formed a group called the sounds of joy. And that kind of went on to uh, me actually connecting with another group uh, through one of the musicians that played for us. I connected with another group called blessed. That's where I met Mitchell Jones, Mitchell Jones at the rehearsal. And, and uh, I told him about our other group with Carl. So Mitch said, hey, man, you know, he came and checked our rehearsal out. He started singing with us. <laughs> so it was Mitchell, Carl and, and, and myself. And Mitch started saying, you just you just got to hear Fred Hammond, you know. And I had already started hearing about Fred Hammond because at the time he was playing bass for the Winans, you know, that type of thing. But Mitch said, oh, you wait. So. The long and short, Fred came and really just totally took took the reins. I mean, he said, hey, man, let's do something different. Let's do something real. I mean, you know, we had a band, which was a, a not pretty good band. Fred said, yeah, we kind of have to take it to another level, you know. And so he had guys, which just so happened, Michael Brooks and Michael Williams were in the group, the other group I was in, Blessed. So I already knew them. But um so Fred just kind of, you know, had some guys in mind, uh, Michael Brooks, Michael Williams. They said, hey, man, how, what would it be like? Michael Wright actually playing the guitar. And uh, Fred said, hey, man, let's do something different, man. You know, we're in Detroit. We're young. We're four guys, singers. Let's be a self-contained group. Let's be a different than the Winans. The Winans, you know, they're, they're the Winans, four guys. Let's, let's kind of go with a different route. So we did that, man. Uh, all the guys, you know, Brooks, uh, Michael Williams, Fred, Carl, myself, everybody, you know, in that day was doing music. You know, we were doing on, on our level, different levels in our local churches and all. And it was just like one of those things of, hey, let's try to take it to another level. Let's believe in ourselves. Literally mm -hmm. where Fred said, I'm willing to stop playing with the wine. It's Michael Williams. Are you willing to stop playing with? Tremaine Hawkins, Brooks, are you willing to stop playing with Vanessa and Tremaine and, and Mike, you know? So it, it was like, yeah, let's do it. And, and, and as they say, the rest is history, you know, <laughs> because we did it, we took a chance and God used six young guys out of Detroit to do some major things around the world. Man, that's my first question. And I, and I took it that long, man, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant answer. It's just give so much context. My family are actually huge fans of, of both Commission and all of you individually. So I just thought I'd just put that out there that, you know, the impacts that you've had on gospel is so amazing. 
Also, following on from this, the commissioned have recorded 12 albums over 17 years and been nominated for four Grammy Awards. What do you think are some of the, what do you think separated the commission from other gospel groups during the 1980s and early 2000s? Well, you know, um, I think, uh, I mean, some obvious things, you know, people that back in the 80s, they were like, you know, who are these young guys covered up, you know, coming out with their first album and they're sitting down on the floor in jeans and what everybody's, you know, you know, these real casual, casual look. Um, because, of course, back then, man, you know, today, I mean, that would be nothing, obviously. I mean, today, you, you, we'll be old and foggy because we don't have tats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, but back then, it was like, man, I mean, everybody was doing, you know, guys were doing uh, the tuxedos, the cummerbunds, the, the full suits. And, you know, and we had suits on our first shoot. We did suits. But um, our manager at the time, Derek Dirksen, said, hey, man, you know, you guys are young, man. You, you know, let's just try. Let's, let's just, you know, bring some casual stuff and let's just take a, a shot with that. And then we'll have something in the can. But, hey, you know, maybe that'll end up being something, you know, in the press. We're used to the press. So it'll be something on the back cover, you know. But then... Once, you know, our the pictures come back and, you know, we looked at everything. The manager said, I believe this is it right here. This is y'all shot. The one with y'all looking like young cats that are just, you know, living their life as opposed to, you know, you have to be dressed as if you're on your way to a communion service. You know what I mean? So, um, which, of course, these days you can wear your jeans to the communion service. <laughs> but back then, man, it was it was unheard of. So I think it was. You know, obvious, we we came with a, uh, a young, we were young. I mean, I, if I remember right, back in 85, when we came out, we were like the youngest guys coming out then. You know, we were young, so it's kind of a cool thing and a wise thing for us to just be who we are, you know, who we were. Then musically, you know, just the blend, man, of Fred and Mitch, Carl, Michael Brooks producing, and Fred producing, Mitch producing and arranging vocals and and, you know, these guys had influences like, you know, uh, like Mitch, you know, that his sound and his influences of really, we call him the R&B, the secular guy group. Fred is kind of in the middle of both that and gospel. I'm, I came with more of the gospel, Carl with the smooth, uh, you know, just like uh, pop almost. And, uh, um, you know, and so it was just a great blend of guys coming together, producing and fresh and um, and it just worked. I mean, you know, it just worked. But I think we really stood out. I mean, even even some of the strategies of recording, you know, everybody would would record and make sure that the background vocals were here down and lead was above and up here. And and it was kind of like commission said, hey, let's let's highlight the background vocals. You know, let's really highlight the background vocals and uh, some of the strategy. I think Fred came up with this idea, if I remember right. Hey, let's let's pattern our vocals, our background. Let's 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 copy the the Clark sisters. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so it's like you these young guy group, but that's kind of the, the the some of the ingredients is hey, let's let's do kind of what they're doing because they're doing special stuff in the background. And um, so the strategy was to you know mixing wise bring the, the vocals up high in the mix. And, uh, you know, it was like a big argument in the studio with Fred and one of the engineers like, no, man, y'all, y'all young, man. You don't know. This ain't how you do it. You know, you don't put the vocals, the background vocals up like that. Fred was like, hey, let's put it up. We're going to do something different. And it worked. I mean, I, I remember when we would be recording, man, you know, and before we would lay the leads, I mean, we would do all our background vocals, but man, it would be so special that you would just, I would, you would listen in your car and be like, you don't even need a, a lead vocal on it. It's, it's already amazing, you know? So I think that's it. I mean, we stood out, um, you know, just the look, the sound. And uh, again, you know, we were young, so it was, a, it was a blessing that we used that and said, hey, let's just be who we are. I mean, we caught some black with it. We had people, 
I, I remember us being, I think we we're in Atlanta and a group of people came up to us and they were like, we have to repent to you all. And I kind of, you know, we thought they were playing, but they were serious. They said, no, we, we judged you all and said, you guys are not, you couldn't be saved the way you're dressing, the way you look, you just look worldly, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. they said, but we heard the lyrics of the songs. We heard, you know, you know, these songs and we have to repent. It's God. You guys are, are, are blessed. So that, that, that's pretty much how that went down. Over 30 years ago, a gospel supergroup came straight out of Detroit with a game-changing sound that transformed the music. Their harmonies gave us gospel slow jams, swipe, and their hard beats and high top fades hit us with some new Jesus swing. All right, welcome to the celebration, ladies and gentlemen. Fred Hammond, Marvin Sapp, Keith Staten, Paul Reed, Mitchell Jones, Michael Williams, and Michael Brooks, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only commissioned. Cry on to ease the agony and find tranquility, or oh, just have a speak soft and love. Speak soft love that means so much. Ordinary just won't do. Someone, Lord, I need someone. That someone is you. That someone is you. Because the ordinary just won't do. I need love that's pure and true. I can always find it in beauty. The ordinary just won't do. I, I gotta have a touch from you. I, can always find it in you, Jesus. The ordinary just won't do. I need the pure and true. I can always find it in you, Jesus. The ordinary just won't do. I gotta have a touch from you. I can always. Sing it one more time. Not So really, really insightful. And in 2021, Commission was inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, which was absolutely amazing. Yeah. But drawing upon that, what do you think are some of the greatest challenges that the contemporary gospel music industry faces? Today, um, <coughs> well, I mean, I don't think it's I don't think it's uh, the things in my mind are not just um, unique to just contemporary. I think it's contemporary gospel, traditional gospel, CCM. I think it's um, even secular R&B pop. Things are just different. 
you know, industry wise, the way people buy music is different. The way people, you know, as far as labels, a lot of artists are saying, I don't really, I don't really need a label uh, because things are so different. Uh, you know, I think back in 80s and the 90s and uh, early 2000s, um, you know, it was kind of like in music, you could say, you know, you knew let's do A, B and C and you'll get D's outcome, you know what I mean? But it's not like that no more. It's just, it's different. It's just, di but it's, I think it's good because it causes an artist to be more involved in their career, more involved in their ministry, more involved in, in the process, be more proactive. <clears throat> it causes you to say, you know, like what we're doing now and with social media, man, it's, it's, at the end of the day, I think it's good. At first it was scary, I think, because people were like, what do we do? You know, you know, it's like back in the day you had, like with commission back in the day, as far as radio was concerned, you had uh, only some, you can count almost the artists on two hands. And, and then it was so many spots available on radio. It was, it was a small number, but compared to the amount of artists, it was reasonable that you'll get good radio. Now you have tons and tons of, you know, uh, contemporary gospel artists, uh, traditional, I mean, you've got tons of, artists out there constantly and music man and i mean it's like back in the day you'll have a song on the radio for for the longest these days it, it happens but it has to be a major hit or it's on and it's out in the next it's because there's so much stuff there's so many people trying to get these few little slots on the radio you know so it's just it's, it's a different time so i think it's a challenge uh for everybody but i think the challenge is getting more light because people are understanding better how to move and what to do to keep your music and keep your ministry going. It's just, you have to be a little more creative. You know, back in the day, you knew you go somewhere, you're going to sell your CDs. And now you're like, uh, maybe we should sell t-shirts and mugs, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it's just different. People buy different. They buy a song at a time and then they may, you know, so it, it's, it's, it's just, uh, I think those are some of the challenges. But again, at the end of the day, I think it actually makes it better because artists are more involved in their, their, their careers and, and being more proactive. Thank you so much. And um, even for a non from that, a, a powerhouse of an R&B, Jamie Foxx, talked about his 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 love for commission because he called you an R and B group to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so what That's advice would, <laughs> what advice right. would you give to gospel artists that want to impact mainstream music but not compromise their message? Well, um, I'll say this. I mean, maybe there's a formula out there for that. I don't know it. Commissioned. Never had a formula to impact uh, secular music and secular artists. And, 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 and we never even set out to do that. We just, again, I said we were six young knuckleheads from Detroit <laughs> <laughs> who loved music, man, and, did, and was like willing to rehearse on every day and do you know just work at it work at it work at it and god just ended up doing that he, he just ended up using what we did to impact many of your secular artists so i don't know the formula other than i think uh well obviously you want to be polished you want to do you know because on the secular side of course there's money going into it there's there's attention there's not going to be and you know, you you can see our 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 artists today, our gospel artists. It, we're up, we're there. You know, a lot of our, you know, the quality of the music is there and all. But you know, so obviously you need to do that. Um, but I say, you know, like with with commission, uh, we just did what was in our heart. We we did music that we felt would touch people. And of course, we did it with a certain level of excellence and actually kind of, you know, our producers lend an ear to what was going on in, in the secular market. We didn't say, OK, we got to make sure we play a gospel chord here. You know, 
music is music. So they, they land and, and leaned in on what was going on around and what they grew up with. And, and uh, it came across really well. So I just say, be yourself, be polished, uh, and just let God really kind of settle what and where your music. I mean, that's how I feel with me, man, with, with what I'm doing now. I just feel like, hey, I'm going to put my best effort and pray to God breathes on it and use it how he wants to use it. Yep. Thank, thank you. And um, even from following on from that, I just want to focus quickly upon you because you, your albums have made history in terms of breaking through to the Billboard charts, Christian yeah. Billboard charts, you know, your three albums, incredible. I listened to a few of your songs and really inspiring. Where do you go to inspiration as a songwriter, as a singer, as a vocalist? And how do you find the inspiration to kind of record those albums? Because each one, when I listen to the songs, the quality is there, the meaning is there. But how do you do that? Because many people struggle in that area. Well, it's my inspiration, <clears throat> you know, not to be cliche, I mean, but it's really the only top answer is God, the presence of God, man, my prayer time, worship, being in just, you know, my life is kind of inspiration of my wife, my son, you know, uh, I get inspiration in my singing and music just by life, man. And, and uh, But of course, the number one answer would be uh, just my relationship with God, you know what I mean? And uh, that brings the quality of or the message at least. I mean, of course, quality has to deal with you just being determined to 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 have quality and, and you get the best, you know. Uh, so, but as far as uh, the messages, usually my projects, um, my last three projects, I have four projects, this would be my fifth. The uh, first one sort of kicked off as not really considered a praise and worship project, although the, the key title, the first uh, title of the album was, uh, well, not the first one, that, that's uh, my first one actually was From the Heart. And that was more of a, that wasn't con really considered praise and worship, but of course there, you will always have a thread of worship from me, you know. Then the next one was uh, uh, No Greater Love, which was a worship song that I believe Don Moen wrote or someone for Integrity Music. And, and I remember singing and doing a concert and a friend of mine was at the concert and I'm probably going to forget what we were talking about, but, <laughs> but a friend <laughs> of mine was at the concert and I sang my stuff on the project that I had at the time. And I did a few hymns, which I love doing. And then I went into some worship and he was like, Hey man, worship is where you, this is, this is where you need to be. He said, when you did that is I saw your purpose, man, you shift the, the audience shift presence of God so from that I was like yeah you know what that's right so that's how I ended up with the no greater love title and then the next two projects were straight up praise in the house no no not praise in the house uh glory in the house and worship in the house worship in the house first and glory in the house but it was always a common thread of worship no matter what I what I do you know um and uh yeah thank you Thank you. And I just want to quickly just ask one last question about commission before I focus upon more upon you. And that is, you know, the group, the group commission has inspired so many artists. This includes Justin Bieber, Joe Kai, and Boys to Men. Yeah. What are some of your best memories working with commission? And will any of the group be collaborating together in any kind of way in the near future? Got you, got you. Um so um, I guess some of my best memories, man, I mean, just being in concert, of course, you know, you know, you're at concert and, and you, especially when, you know, I spent time as a solo artist and then came back for the reunion tour and the reunion recordings. Uh, and then we did some things recently in 2019, but you know, it was just being on stage and the camaraderie with the guys and, and just, you knew everybody that grabbed the mic could take us somewhere. Every musician could, be, you know what I mean? So you just felt a comfort of, man, you know, I'm on a good team here. You know what I'm saying? And I just love 
traveling and all of the guys. I mean, one thing about every member of commission, they're all crazy. I mean, they're just, they're, they're funny guys, you know? And uh, so it was always fun. You know, we would be, I remember us being, uh, us getting on the airplane and, you know, group of us, the band, getting on the plane all of us with the band and everything and people were like hey are you guys a team are you all you know athletes team or what and one of the guys was like yeah we're, we're an eating team <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do so we just have, so we just have like uh great times man having fun everywhere we go man uh uh just being together laughing together but i think uh probably a memory that will never, never, never fade, man, was just the impact that the group made. I mean, we, to this day, man, I get people, it's, it's just consistent. It never stops that you guys helped me through the roughest time of my life. You guys helped me through depression. You guys really changed my mind and heart from committing suicide. You guys got me through college. You guys got me through, you know, uh, uh, my parents falling apart and, you know, so that's some of the things, man, that I will never forget, man, that God used young guys, man, to really uh, bless the lives of so many. So that, that'll always be uh, amazing to me. Commission means everything to me because growing up, being in a Baptist church, and things were, you know, sort of old school. But when you were here commission, they were like young and fresh. They were like an R&B group, only it was R&B for Jesus. You know, uh, rhythm and Bibles, shall we say. But when I heard him say, I'm going on in the name of the Lord. Reaching for my goal, my eternal life reward. God is a mighty fortress in the time of storm. He'll brighten up your day If you only trust and pray I'm going on in the name Of the Lord And it was something to aspire to right? And you couldn't look to any R&B group That would not name Commission uh, As someone that they pattern their singing after Whether it's Boys and Men whether well, it's uh, Jodeci, we all came and we all come from the church. Commission made you think as a kid, okay, young people go to heaven too. Because for the longest, we just thought, you know, old people singing, old, old rugged cross, and the Lord Jesus is the only one who's going to beat out. We didn't think it was going to be no children's. But, but because of a commission, um, Fred Hammond and all he's done, and it's just... Uh, You'll never forget it, and it's the building blocks and the foundation for me and my life. Thank you so much. And even following on from the start to focus upon your single, All or Nothing. So I'm sorry. Can you say again? Now focus upon your single, All or Nothing. You're releasing mm -hmm. a single film called All or Nothing. Is that correct? All or Nothing? Yes, yes, yes. That's so, going to be. I'm sorry. That's going to be, uh, yeah, my first single uh, for my project. And uh, it's going to release here any day now. I mean, before July is out, it'll release. We're about to, in a, about another two days, we'll have the final exact date. <laughs> but yeah, man, it, it's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I'm excited. It's an awesome song, kind of a mid-tempo uh, song that talks about uh, really, you know, just if we're going to worship God, you know, the Bible talks about being hot or cold. He would rather we be either or, you know, whatever you're going to be, just go all in, you know. So it's like talking about worship and how, you know, it's all or nothing, man. You know, when we worship God, let it be in spirit and truth. Let it be real. Let it be, uh, you know, in, in the song, it talks about uh, I'll make you my obsession. You know, God, I'll make you my obsession, you know. It's all or nothing. And, and then the song kind of talks about out of all of our efforts, really with God, it's, he just wants our worship, all or nothing. He wants our worship, you know. 
And it's a part of the song that talks about that with our efforts and all. And it says only, but only your blood will do. You know, when I, I've given my all of this, but it's, so it kind of turns it back to the reality that there's a finished work of, of, of Calvary that, you know, Jesus has done the work and it's really your blood. And no matter what we bring to the table at the end of the day, it's because of you, you know, that we are who we are and that in you, you know, so but yes, it's an awesome. I'm very excited about the song. Very excited about the project. I just really can't wait to uh, matter of fact, let's 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 play it somewhere on on your at the end of this, maybe. But uh, I'm very excited about it. Thank you for asking. Thank you. I'd just like to touch a bit more upon your album because I'm really excited about your new album that's coming out. So could you please just tell us just a bit about it? Maybe some of the things you're addressing, the, the writing process, why you decided to release the album now. It would just yeah. be nice to know. Yeah. So, man, I, I'm, I'm <clears throat> again, I'm so excited that the project is uh, produced by my good friend and brother, Marcus Cole of Commission. Okay. And I just believe it's his time. I mean, just hearing songs, he wrote a lot of the songs, the majority of the songs. We wrote some together. I wrote some with my son, Anthony, uh, and a guy named Ronald Ross. Uh, we have some different writers. We're even doing one of the commission. Uh, one of the songs we kind of redid, uh, More Than You Ever Know, the song I used to lead, More Than You Ever Know, written by Michael Brooks. Uh, we have some great surprises on it. Uh, we have a song on it uh, called Speak To Me, You Have My Attention, Speak To Me, Lord. And I think you may hear some commission voices on there <laughs> on the background. <laughs> uh, but it's 11 songs. And powerful songs, man. You know, nice amount of up-tempo, mid-tempo. Project of State kind of between up and mid. We do have some slow ballad, but more of the project is kind of up and uh, up and uh, mid. <clears throat> and uh, also uh, Christian Dentley uh, co-produced with Marcus uh, of, of Take Six. And um, man, it, it's I just believe that this project is going to bless so many people, man. It's... Uh, just uh, sonically, uh, the word, lyrically, uh, some of the best musicians from around the world is on this project. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's really gonna be a blessing. And I really can't wait for you all to hear it, to get it. So we're gonna release, again, we're releasing the first single July. We'll do another one in August. We'll do another single in September, October, then I'll probably, you know, I'll, I'll drop something for Christmas, a song, Christmas song, or maybe two. <clears throat> but then in January, after the Christmas season's over, the whole project will release. And uh, it, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a blessing. I mean, I, I you, you know, I, I want to say, but I don't want to sound like, you know, I'd rather somebody else say how great. But hey, God has touched it. I believe God has breathed on it. And I'm just praying that he really does amazing things as far as getting it in the hands of people and great radio play and, and uh, great, you know, platforms like yours, man, pushing it. So uh, I'm excited about it and uh, looking forward to everyone hearing it. Thank you so much. I'm really excited also. <laughs> well, going on from that, um, I'd also like to just draw upon you know, just you, you've been married to your wife for 25 years, over 25 years now. Yeah, um, actually, it's been uh, 30, it'll be 36 years wow. in September. <laughs> yeah. Incredible. Yeah, I know I look, I know I look, I know I look young. I know you're like, 36 years? <laughs> if you didn't have, if you didn't have gray in your beard, you would look 36 now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. finish your question. I messed your question up. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what advice would you give to young couples that want to have longevity in their marriage? Well, man, you know, uh, I think, <clears throat> first of all, well, if you're already married, hope more than likely, I would believe that you were in love. And uh, if you're in love, man, love conquers all. I mean, if, if that always fall back on the fact that you know, two people getting together, it's going to be problems, it's going to be situations, and it's not going to always be the devil. I mean, it's, 
especially if you're grown, if you're in your thirties, you're in your, you know, and in the 21st century, you know, it's like two people coming together and you're two individuals, two grownups with ideas and different things. So it's going to be some bumps in the road, but I just think that I know with me and my wife, I think that uh, we really were able to get through stuff by prayer. I mean, we pray together. Thank God, you know, you're in a good position. Obviously, you marry a believer, someone that that your values are pretty much close together. And, you know, and you all could kind of come to that 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 three band chord of Christ in the center of, of your marriage and prayer. You know, so that really, really helps. And then it's, it's, it's just some natural things, man. Like we tend to be selfish. We tend to say what, you know, even when we get into a relationship is what are you bringing to the table? So we start out selfish. I want to know what you're bringing to the table. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Instead of what could I give? You know what I mean? And, and we look at marriage as, uh, especially these days, you know, as, hey, it's, you know, 50, 50 and no, no marriage is not 50, 50. It's a hundred and a hundred. It's both giving a hundred percent of yourself trying to not be, don't many causes of, of, of divorce is just really selfishness. You know, we say it's money. No money problems, just magnified selfishness. It magnifies, you know, if you're, if you're not selfish, you can work through anything. So I just think love each other, know that love or love will never fail. Be selfless instead of selfish. You know, prefer your brother, prefer your sister. Just say, you know, if that's the attitude, uh, it'll be a blessing. Be friends. You know, I, I, I didn't realize that that was even a thing. I just naturally with my wife, she's my best friend. And, you know, we, we it's people that get married and, and they don't really act like friends. They're just like we, we, we partners in, in the bed. We're partners for this. But. Uh, after that, you go your way, I go my way. Now that's going to be a problem. I say, be friends, be together, talk together, you know, and just trust trust God in the in the center of it. Thank you. Really, really sound advice. Thank you. And Man. following on from that, you're constantly involved in ministry. But what do you, what hobbies do you engage in when you want to relax, just to kind of like de stress and yeah, yeah. Man, I'm like outdoor guy. I tried to do this interview. <laughs> I, I, I live in Orlando. I tried to do this interview outside. <laughs> and I went out there and kind of started setting up. I said, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me get inside. It's too hot. But I, I'm just, I love outdoors. I walk pretty much like five miles a day. Uh, I like working out. My wife and I, our son, we, we like to work out together. Uh, I want to... I started some years ago, man, years ago playing golf, never played it long enough to be good, but I want to do that because it kind of still fits my, my, uh, what I like being out on the golf course is just, you're outside. It's beautiful. You get to walk, you know, and that thing. So I'm getting more into that. I, I'm, I, I want to get back into biking. I used to love riding bikes. So I'm going to get more into that. But it's, it's usually going to end up being something dealing with outdoors, <laughs> you know, being in the sun and, and getting uh, that vitamin D. So, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. And the last question I'd like to ask you is just about anything you're working on um, aside from your album in 2022 or 2023. So maybe any tours you're doing maybe any promotional stuff we're doing that people can support, the audience can support in 22 to 2023? Yeah. So, yeah, pretty much it's the, um, you know, my project. That's that's my full focus now. Uh, you know, getting it out, getting on the road, man, you know, putting band, you know, working with getting the band together and things like that. But I just hope people will roll with us, man. Uh, you know, we want to be able to come it's been years since I've been to London. I want to come back to London. Uh, just really, you know, uh, hope people would roll with us when they hear that I'm coming to be a part of it. And uh, I don't want to talk a whole lot about it, but there may be something happening with commission. Mm -hmm. 
recording. <laughs> so as that kind of unfolds, you know, I uh, definitely want people to support it. Um, but you could uh, definitely uh, hit my uh, my inter- my uh, website, KeithStaten.com, for, like, mm-hmm. updates and things that's going on and what I'm doing. That's KeithStaten.com. But, uh, again, man, I just hope people would really, you know, grab this project. And uh, when they hear we're coming to town, show up and uh, let me know that you're there type of thing. But, uh, yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Keith, for such an exceptional interview. I've thoroughly enjoyed interviewing you. Thank you. I enjoyed, man. I enjoyed the questions and enjoy being on your, your, on your platform. Appreciate you. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Bless you, man. Say it. What kind?